I saw it, but I didn't realize that we done with the nineties was such a big social media like yeah, which is, uh, yeah but the people the vi- said, virality of it. I didn't know that was that viral. Yeah, the people are like we're done with the nineties and you see people talking about it. I was like, Can you shut like bro, like cars weren't lit back in the day neither. Like it's <laughs> it's the maturity of the game, you idiot. <laughs> Like, I'm done with the 90s. I did it. Like, bro, that's so... I thought it was just funny, a funny voice. Like, yeah. it was funny. I'm like, oh, no, y'all for real. Y'all really think and then, and y'all really think MJ can't go left. Yeah. Oh, y'all that stupid. No, when he sat there, <laughs> I was like, man, this is why... Y'all been TikTok yet? Like, that, like, that type of shit. It's like, man... What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Point Forward Podcast. Myself, Andre Iguodala, being joined by my guy, Evan Turner. Present. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe and follow us everywhere you get you go to listen to your podcast. And make sure you follow us across all social media platforms at Point Forward. Point Forward. In today's episode, we're speaking to Malik Mack, Harvard's unstoppable freshman phenom who's turning heads and tearing up the college basketball scene. We'll also be talking about the philanthropic work that Russell Westbrook is doing in his hometown of Los Angeles. Love, Russ. Beautiful. NCAA Selection Sunday and our brackets are right around the corner. You can get a few dollars from that. Curry Brand is signing University of South Carolina guard Malaysia Fuwali. Mm-hmm. She got crazy game. Yep. OD. OD. We'll also be talking about who is the face of the NBA. Point. Forward. As the season winds down, teams are starting to carve out their postseason futures. Uh, We are on the brink of what could be a bittersweet scenario for basketball fans. As of right now, the bottom four teams in the Western Conference final slotting consists of some of the game's greatest players, and those teams are the Mavericks, Suns, Lakers, and Warriors. These preseason favorites are now at risk to be fighting for their lives in the play-in game. That's we set the play-in record this year on, on, on viewership? I think so. <laughs> Gee, I might throw a party for that joint. <laughs> it's tra- it's, bro, the Lakers Clipper or the Lakers Warriors joint was crazy. It was. But then it was like bittersweet. Like, so you mean no staff? Like, <laughs> like, like I was hurt. Like, bro, this shouldn't be legal, dog. Yeah. 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 Or no Bron. Or no KD. Or no Kyrie or Book. I mean, uh, uh, Donchie. Or, uh, Donchie. And you said it before we spoke about this. You said, uh, Dame said, Luca will find a way to get in the playoffs. Yeah, he always, he always said that. He's like, man, sometimes you'll sit at Luca. He said, I'll be over here struggling trying to get to the playoffs. And Luca in fourth or fifth place two weeks ahead. You know what I mean? True story. So, what, some. What do you think, if you saw some matchups and we're just talking hypothetical or whatever, say, how would they try to draw it up if a Luca went up and gets a Brian in this situation? It's for one game. For one game. Like, would it be a passing of the torch, quote unquote? Or would you want to see a rematch of the Suns Dallas? Would that be good for the NBA? Or would you know Suns I mean? Dallas with, with with Luca and For one game, take all the marbles? No, with with Luca and Book. Book. Luca and Book have great history. Yeah, for sure. For sure. In terms of them just battling. I, I, Luca has great history because of Book. To be honest with you, G, and Book is one of my favorites. He, it's just certain stuff that he does that somehow Luca just trumps. Bro, the thing where he was like, y'all want to talk when y'all winning, and he came back and blew them smooth out, So it's, it's I, crazy. I saw this amazing thread. I think it was fake, but it was amazing, of uh, wide receivers. And it started off with one wide receiver was like, uh, it was DK Metcalf. Okay. And I think he was going against a uh, a good a good uh, corner. Well, like Pat Sertan, the second? I forgot which corner it was. And he made a tough catch, and he said something. Somebody said something about it. And uh, DK was like, what you, what, what you thought? Like, yeah, that sound about right. It's me. And so somebody else was like, oh, you sure? Like another receiver. Who's the receiver for the Bills? My man from the Bills, the receiver. Diggs. Diggs was like, fam, you just, yeah, just because you big don't mean you the best. He was like, yeah, okay. And so then my man, the uh, Patrick Peterson, Patrick yeah. Peterson, right? Patrick Peterson or Patterson? Pat, 
Patterson is from the Raptors. No, it's no, no. Patrick Peterson from yeah. the Cardinals. Yeah, yeah. Was like uh, Jalen Ransom's Jalen Ramsey's your dad. And so he was like, "No, he ain't." And then Jalen Ramsey got to the uh, got into the chat. Like they all enter in the chat yeah, at different moments. Yeah. Like, stop it! No, I'm the best. No, I'm the best. No, I got something to say about that. But it got to Patrick Patterson saying, Patrick Peterson saying, Jalen Ramsey is your, really your dad. He was like, "No, he's not." Like he he checked his tone. Yeah. And then here comes Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey was like, "But I really am." Check the <laughs> tape. And then they just had all his receiving yards on games that they had matchups. Crazy. It was one of the coldest things I've ever seen. And so what you're saying right now is this is essentially Luca and Book. Essentially. And then it's like to end the season. So when you're talking as a guy in that position, what does that do for numbers? Like, you know what I mean? What does that do for numbers? Obviously, the play-in game could probably be the most viewed play-in game going forward. True. The thing about the playoffs, from those from those teams alone, from the Mavs, you got Luca, you got Kyrie. Mm-hmm. From the Suns, you got KD, Brad, Bill, Devin Booker. Yep. For the Lakers, you got Brian, AD, yeah. and then for the Warriors, you got, you know, Chef Curry and the rest of the homies. Mm-hmm. For sure. Aside yeah. from all the all-stars that are really on a team, like with the Lakers, D'Angelo Russell, who's playing unbelievable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like those type of levels, it's like, yo, to to miss that type of talent. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting. In April? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And so the DraftKings odds, uh, the Suns odds before the season, they were a plus 550 to reach the NBA Finals. Not the playoffs, the Finals. The Finals. A plus two seventy to win the Western Conference Final and a plus one seventy to win the Pacific Division. Listed at plus nine hundred to face the Bucks or Celtics in the NBA Finals. Here are the odds from the first day of the season and now. NBA champs on October twenty fourth of two thousand twenty three, they were a plus six fifty. Now today they are a plus two thousand. Huge difference. Uh, Western Conference champs on October 24th, they were plus 350. Now they're at plus 950. Pacific Divi- Division champs odds, the DraftKings odds in October were plus 145. Now they're at plus 2200 as the Pacific Division champs. Who's 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 leading the Pacific Division right now? Sack. Damn, is that them? Yeah. The Lakers, the Warriors, Phoenix. No, Sack, Clippers, Pacific. Clippers, Clippers, Clippers. Nah, I mean, the brother. Clippers took a couple L's. That's not the, the Pacific Clippers. division, is yes, it? It is. But I was in the Pacific. What you mean? This how bogus that travel schedule was. It was all them teams in L.A. and we'd be going to Memphis and Minnesota. I think Minnesota's oh. in the Pacific. No, Minnesota's not in the Pacific. There's no way Minnesota's. In. Look up who's winning the Pacific division. Sacramento or the Clippers? Bro, I don't think they're Pacific. Who? Man. You Ooh. you know better. You might know better. Who you don't think's in the Pacific? I, I know they in the Pacific. I don't think that's the division. Pacific. It is the Pacific division. You 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 right. Minnesota's in the Northwest. Bro, I'm trying to tell you, G. Then oh, I was in the Northwest division. Yeah. That makes complete sense. Never mind. Denver. All right. I'm sorry, G. <laughs> I'm sorry. Denver, Portland. That makes Minnesota. sense. Minnesota. That makes sense. No, you have, you have that the Northwest. You're yeah, right. Yeah, you're yeah, absolutely yeah, that's yeah, full yeah, of shit yeah, though. Yeah. Whoever else over there? Yeah, because them, them trips to to Memphis and like. Minnesota, yeah, Memphis, yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah, four and a half, yeah, like four yeah. hours there, OKC. four hours back. OKC, OKC bro, that armpit, like you know what I mean? <laughs> it was like the Central Division. It was just the Central <laughs> Division. Yeah, you like, bro, I'm gonna jump in my car and I'll meet y'all there. Like you know what I mean? But isn't it crazy? Do you think the Suns can have a chance to actually win? Would that be kind of crazy? Would this be like? And so uh, yeah 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 yeah. And I yeah, think yeah, KD's yeah. resume might yeah, yeah, this yeah, would yeah. be good for KD's resume. For sure. To be and and then you. let me finish the drafting hypothetical odds for individual finals matchups. Yeah. These are as of today, not preseason. <laughs> Celtics Suns meeting the finals plus 1800, 18 to 1 odds and then the Suns Bucks meeting in the finals is a plus 4100, 41 to 1 odds. Mm-hmm. Um so there it is. But I mean speaking of it's funny cuz out of all those teams, like who who to you realistically could get to the finals between Phoenix, Dallas, the Lakers, and the Warriors? The Warriors. Bro, you can't – I can bet on Brian. I'm going to do that, all right? No, I'm saying out of all those three, you're saying the Warriors are the only team that you can see realistically get to the finals? Yeah, bro. Hmm. 
But that, that's how bad these fools were acting. Like, like it's you just understand very what true. I'm saying? Like, I can only go, I'm not going against Steph. But, yeah. like, it's not nothing bad. Like, I think the Lakers, obviously, you can't go against Brian. Like, that's that's legit. But, like, I just want to understand what the, like, Sun's been hurt, but, like, how? Yeah. And then when we talk about, like, just greatness and you compare, like, you know, even you say Brown or you compare Steph to when he's turned up and he lifts every voice, it's like he might struggle, but he don't struggle like this. Right, right. You understand know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's like, but, like, he got three full clips, like, two full clips with him, Katie. And yeah. sometimes it'd be like Steph just really be out there, like, raising, going through kids' maturity, going through, like, people off the court issues. <laughs> <laughs> Going through a, 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 a you know an ailing superstar like a declining superstar his up and down moments like you know what I mean it's mm-hmm. like you got real stuff over there and just with them it's like granted Brad Bill was hurt but I just sometimes I just don't they this, this is alarming they can't this, get on the court at the same time in Phoenix it feels like yeah because book out now yeah it is crazy I mean yeah. it's just KD luck bro same thing happened with the with the Nets you know what I mean very true shortcuts man you can't shortcut. Uh, yeah. Point forward. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks into one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. North Carolina listeners, don't forget DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Point Forward. New customers can bet five bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code point four. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Woodhill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.co slash bball for eligibility and deposit restriction terms and responsible gaming resources. Point four is sponsored by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Point forward. One thing that I saw recently, there hasn't been an American player that's won the league MVP in like five or six years, right? Mm-hmm. The globalization of the game. And when you break five or six years down, you start into a new decade. Mm-hmm. It no longer has become like, ah, that's not a thing to like, wait, that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. Like when we're sitting here, it's like, mm-hmm. all right, not only is it might not be an American player, but then it's two or three that you're juggling pause in between that you're like, yo, who is it? Is it the reigning MVP Jokic? Mm-hmm. And is it his buddy Luka Doncic? Mm-hmm. Or is it I mean, <laughs> Joel Embiid? I'm not going down in a Greek freak chick. You talking about as the MVP or just like face, face of the league, bro? Face just like league. face of the league. Oh, right like, now, okay, okay. So you're sitting right there, yeah. it's like you yeah. have like you look at Luca. He signed with Jordan. He's global. He's mm-hmm. leading the league in points, mm-hmm. all this and a third. Joel and B looks like the created player we used to create back in NBA 2K2. True. And then you look at Jokic. Like we just, we keep speaking about this, and nobody brings it up. He just passed Jordan for all time per. Hmm. That is crazy. It's impressive. Impressive. So but. You have to, you have to include the Greek freak. You know, absolutely. He, he came off joking. the cha- he came off the absolutely. championship, came yeah. off the championship. Shout out to Drew Holiday, came off the championship, <laughs> and you see what he's doing now with his uh, production company with Jay Jay Will from I Duke. I saw that. Yeah, and uh, he's got the partnership with WhatsApp. Did he? Yeah, he's got a big. I, I see. I keep seeing WhatsApp commercials. I never seen so many WhatsApp commercials. Good for WhatsApp. Uh, he had a documentary, I think, of surrounding that. And then they then he did a movie. No, the, the 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 WhatsApp like content is separate from the movie that he did. Oh, he wow. did like the Disney movie yeah, about him and his that, brothers and his life. That was pretty yeah, dope yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, actually, when I did my little like uh, trip to Sedona, the wife of like the WhatsApp. Creator was there. Oh, yeah. So she was with me the whole time. She's a cool lady, up? nice lady. Mm. Random WhatsApp story, but did they they undersold WhatsApp. Did they? I mean, anything worth the. Is it ever undersold when it's a bunch of money? Never. Yeah, you take that, you flip that, then you flip that again, and you take that back, <laughs> and you flip that, then you keep going. But but anyway, 
I heard a conversation you had right before the All Star game, mm-hmm. which is why we brought me to this, you know, topic of it was. You, you, you spoke to the players, and you're like, yo, take advantage of the game. Like, you, it's on you to carry this game forward. Mm-hmm. You guys have to be owners of this game. This is your league. Right. And when it comes down to discussing the league, American-wise or just player-wise, you, you oftentimes – I remember Andre Bargnani. He, would, he was the number one pick. He would just get his bread and just go back overseas. Right. And I remember people would be begging, like, how come we don't know him so well? Right. Or why don't we – Obviously, Yah was kind of promoted as well, but, like, we didn't know them on a personal level mm-hmm. more so than anything else. And I feel as though that one of your narratives and messages has been like, no, that's your responsibility to the NBA. If you're going to be the best player here, you have to be paused, open. You have to be, you know, literally always available to be on that of a Michael Jordan, that of a LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Or even you look at Jason Tatum. You turn on the TV all the time, yeah. he's there. He just had a crazy interview, and he told me personally – where I'm like, yo, you saying out tomorrow you're doing this? And he, he literally was like, I never sit out on the road. And I'm like, why? It's like, because people paying to see JT. <laughs> but it was funny, but it was just the truth. He didn't yeah. tell me this to brag. He yeah. told me this. And I'm sitting there like, no, dog, thank, as a as a person who, like, looked up to Jordan, looked up to, I appreciate mm-hmm. you taking the game this serious. For sure. You know what I mean? For sure. And that's what I was speaking to, you know, Steph's just turned 36. Mm-hmm. You know, he's carried a torch. He's... He's one of those who has gone so far beyond serving the game. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I always say your duty. Like, I live by this mantra. Once you've mastered something, it's your duty to go back and teach it. Like, you got you to gotta hold it down yeah. in some capacity. Bronze held it down like one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Like, it comes with a burden. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you got you to gotta have something wrong with you to hold that burden. Yeah. Like, MJ had the gambling. You know, Kobe was a cold-blooded killer. Like, Bron had to handle – He like, bron has been holding down a torch for for too long. Yeah. Like, it was almost like it was a burden. We put a, another burden on yeah. him. Like, he already held it down. Yeah. Steph's been incredible, you well, know. They said something that, that uh, the more and more accolades that Bron and records that he breaks, it makes Steph Curry look that much more impressive, it's a true story. which is crazy. It's a true story. To really say true that. True story. And then I'm even putting Kevin Durant in that breath, you know, because – well, he loves playing basketball so much, but it's just like we're getting to the point where we're, we're bothering guys who are going above and beyond for us because KD has gone above and beyond. And also, <laughs> too, like it's like what Dre said. Like, some of these dudes are moonwalking through a battlefield, dog. Like, KD, <laughs> he'll be going through all this. I'm like, then he's still averaging 28. <laughs> like, 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 what? Like, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Or Steph might just go, like, savage time. And you're like, bro, this is a different type level where, like. Hey, 36. Yeah, we're pre, like, he's yeah. doing it for us, bro. Because yeah. Buddy worth, like, 500 and some, all his homies, and <laughs> started riding off towards the hill. He's like, what I'm doing it for, you know? Right, right. And, and so, go ahead. Yeah, but then you, you talk about those past faces and, like, how they stepped up and what they understood. Mm-hmm. And even the battles are just rising up every single time. Mm-hmm. Now it's kind of more serious where we'll sit down and it's like, you hear some of the best players be like, well, you know, I don't really care about this. I don't really care about that. It's like, no, that you have to care. Yeah. Like, you're really setting the tone. Like, yeah. we're sitting down as like a Luka, like Draymond. It's like, well, Luka will never try an all star game setting or trying this way. That's setting the tone of how people play, mm-hmm. think. Like, mm-hmm. when Steph was the best player in the world, every kid you meet now shoot, four, shoot 48 feet out. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? And that's really yeah. setting the tone and the narrative of, like you always say, leave the game better yeah. than, than when you found it. And I was just watching some videos on Luca's step back, where he stepped back, but his feet aren't really leaving the ground, so yeah. it's a step back shift to get back to yeah. between the legs if you cut yeah. off the step back, which is an amazing move. Because if he goes left, he's stepping back. Yeah. Sure, he go right, he's yeah, driving already. Yeah, he's stepping already. back, and his left foot is rocking off, off on, his, on the outside of his, of his foot, yeah. and then he's getting back between the legs, getting back to his right. Yeah. And so they're watching him closely, but I'm saying all that to say, like, and I even put Dame in that same breath where – where Dame held it down. Dame yeah. did what he's supposed to do because you yeah. knew you were going into battle every time you saw him. Yeah. And it's just raising the level of play. That responsibility is a big part yeah. of it. And it's no matter where you go, you can be at the park. It could be summertime. I remember going back to lockout, and you remember the lockout games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was like, crazy. It got so crazy, you had some dudes ducking some other dudes, you yeah. know? And so I'm saying that's heavy as the head. That's what I always say. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. And they got to see you, bro. It's a big deal for people to see you. It's a big deal for people to see you. Um, I did did have a a brief conversation with Luca, 
And he was like, yeah, I, 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 I definitely got to do more and I'm doing more. So it was like, okay, like, I think these guys are starting to understand it. They're starting to get it. Um, and it's just a part of it. Like, the faces now, like, the next crop that are, like, in their prime faces, like you said, it's Luka, it's, it's, it's Jokic, it's Embiid, uh, it's Giannis. And so those guys are just right, right there right now. And, um, you know, it's interesting to see Joker switch out his Nike deal. You know, Nike never really yeah, yeah. gave that much love to big men. Like, it was always hard for big men to sell yeah. shoes. So, you know, as a big... Especially during the, um, shoot, the Sabrina Iskew era. Right. We, oh, Nike only putting out one shoe right now. <laughs> but, but it's interesting because, yeah. it's like, as a big, it's, it's hard to break through that arena of sneakers. Yeah. Like, how many bigs have actually been able to have success in selling a shoe? Mm. Shaq. Yeah, but he sure. was like an, a whole character came with that. Yeah, for like sure. He was just who he naturally was. You know, he was doing movies. He was yeah, rapping. Yeah, yeah. And so, they, you know, how do you become be more relatable as a freak of nature? Yeah, that is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. no one's ever really broke broken that down. But before Greg Oden got hurt, I thought he would have been the next. The be, one of the best commercials ever was a Greg Oden uh I don't know if it's an ESPN commercial, but he's talking about oh, it. He's yeah. like, I know big men aren't as marketable, but I'm a chameleon. And they showed him, like, in eight different, like, forms with just a face like this. <laughs> you know? But, yeah. like, one thing I say when you talk about the face in the NBA, do you think it's, like, a conspiracy theory when people are always, like, no, the league can't last if Americans not a face in the NBA? Like, American basketball needs, needs Americans to be the face of the NBA or it's just going to crumble. Along with like the style of play, do you ever, do you hear that? Do you, do you ever hear that? It's like I oh, guess. Oh, that's not, interesting. I never really, I never really hear about that. That's what I said. As much. Yeah, like y'all don't have natural swagger, then how the hell? Like, don't nobody want to be like you. Right. <laughs> like, exactly. Like, and that's exactly. what makes exactly. you great. It's part of your trends. Like you understand, what I'm saying it's right. part of like mm -hmm. what you're able to. You know what I mean? Able to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you look at the crop like that's coming right after those guys, and you know, JT yeah. is right there, obviously. Um, then you got uh, the young, young boys, and yeah. there's two of them. Yeah. It's Shea yeah. and it's, it's A.E. Yeah, I mean, Shea is Canadian, but... and yeah. Well, that's the interesting part, because some guys just move like you would think they're an American. Yeah. And I think we forget Shea is Canadian. No, for sure, until you hear them talk, and you be like, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's that. a bunch of them like that. You forget yeah. Wiggs. Yeah, Devin Booker. No, 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 I mean Dylan Brooks. Well, the, the, the Devin Booker as well. We, we, we haven't mentioned him, but yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a bunch of guys... Um, from Canada, I mean J Jamal Murray yeah, is Jamal another Murray. Canadian. Like yeah. they just, they having a crazy Lou Dort, Lou you Dort, know, having an sure. amazing moment right Kelly now. Kelly Olynyk, it's yeah, a lot of, a lot yeah, of good people. Yeah, 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 so. yeah, so I mean, but then you got Wimby. Yeah, they talking about you know we heard what he said. Yeah, you said, he said Rudy, you got one more year to yeah. to for and defensive player of the year. Yeah, he talking crazy <laughs> for us. Yeah, we're wow, damn, geez, is it gonna be a rain of terror? Like, what you know? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even last night, he was just like, yo, and I, he cleaned it up for game. Yeah, and he said, I'm, I'm not even at the level. I'm not even at my best yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, my guy Zach uh, Collins has said he's like one thing about Wimby. He's really in tune of who he is, mm -hmm. and he understands the bigger picture. Yeah. So he's like, there is no foolishness. Like he comprehends. Like, damn, I could. I'm supposed to be better than Bron. Like type stuff, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be a fun time, a fun, a, a fun year. I think one thing as fans that we always appreciated, even when you brought up Shaq, was like, even though you didn't know him, you always felt like Shaq or you know Magic and some of those old players always came back in the screen and like talk to you and touch you, yeah, 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 and make you believe you're going to the NBA, even though they had no clue who you were. Yeah, like you grew up and say, like, bro, I know Shaq. Yeah, I personally know him, like. Yeah. Understand, I'm gonna do this on, I'm gonna do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, sure. I, I think that that really matters. Point forward. In today's episode, we're speaking to Malik Mack, Harvard's unstoppable freshman phenom who's turning heads and tearing up the college basketball scene. Without further ado, here's our conversation with Malik. Point forward. We have a very, very special guest, uh, a kid I'm a big fan of. I was watching TV back in like the fall, and I'm like, I'm watching Harvard, always been a big Harvard fan because mm -hmm. of Tommy Amaker. And I see a young kid with dreads and tied up, and I'm like, oh, okay, he, he, he passed the admissions test. Like, I'm into that. Let's let's see how he hooping. And Shorty was just going crazy, mm -hmm. bro. And I just remember from November, you know, back to now, it's like, yo, I for sure want to get this kid on a pod. And, you know, just following his uh, 
all on his development just his year. Mm -hmm. Average 18 a game, was four or five time, you know, uh, Ivy League player of the week. You know, they made a lot of uh, headlines this year with their battles against uh, Princeton. Mm -hmm. Him and uh, Xavier Lee were rated as, you know, some of the top guards in the Ivy League. But one thing that really stood out to me about this kid was like, yo, he has, you know, big five conference type talent. It's not just Ivy League type talent, but uh, I just want to always figure out what his story was. And we're lucky enough to have the young man on the show today, uh, you know, Malik Mack from uh, Hailing from D.C. And a starting point guard, phenom point guard out of uh, Harvard University. Welcome to the show, Malik. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Sure. No doubt. So, Malik, a lot of people obviously don't know you outside of, uh, you know, the college sport right now. It's kind of like your introduction and since you're still making your name. But tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, uh, who you are, where you come from, in your own words. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Oxford Hill, Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C., by like five minutes. Um, okay. PG County, I'm pretty sure y'all y'all know about that. Yep, it's something in the um, water, went, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I went to high school in uh, St. John's College High School in D.C., um, I didn't have too many offers. I had I had a couple of uh, good mid major looks, but then um, at Harvard just stood out the most. Coach Am Coach Amaker was my guy. Um, he showed me love from day one, um, and then he never lied to me as well. He kept it one hundred percent honest with me. So um, that's how I ended up at Harvard. I just felt like I could trust him the most. You talked about PG County, and we spoke a little bit about all the talent that came from there. What was what's it like growing up in that area? And when you know KD made the movie Something in the Water. Like, is that quote-unquote like the basketball city or the basketball town? You guys try to claim it, but what's what's the game like growing up? Um, It's very competitive. I mean, every time you step in the gym, it's going to be it's gonna be some big dogs in the gym, so you got to be ready to play. Um, Last summer, a lot of times when I'm in the gym, you just see guys like Quinn Cook or you'll see Jeremy Grant in the gym. Like, everybody, everybody's working. Everybody come back home to work. So um, growing up in PG County, it's just always – it's like a doggy dog world. Like, you're always going to play against the top guys. So who was the what was the AAU scene like for you uh, coming up in DC, and was there ever conversations around like it's cool to go to Ivy League school? Because like now that I'm forty years old and like now that I'm older, it's like we want our kids to go to, yeah. to Harvard. You know what I mean? And, and but when you're fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years old, it's not looked at as a cool thing. And so, you know, what was AAU like for you? You said you didn't get, you know, too many looks outside of mid-majors. But what was that conversation like in terms of, like, were you talking about, like, going to an Ivy League school coming from the background that you came from? Um, Definitely not. It wasn't something I thought I'd end up doing. Um, I played with Team Takeover, and uh, okay. our team was stacked. Um, I actually came off the bench. I was I started a couple of games, but I came off the bench. Um, we had a lot of guys. We had, we had two kids going to Duke. We got a um, kid at Maryland, um, another kid going to UConn. So my team was really loaded. So I didn't have to do too much. So um, I feel like I kind of got overlooked in that sense. But, yeah, I didn't really think the Ivy League was something I wanted to do. Even leading up to my decision, that was kind of I was kind of hesitant to go to Harvard because of, like, the Ivy League and the rules that come with it and things like that. And then especially where I come from, PG County, like, ain't too many guys going to Ivy League schools. So it was something I was hes hesitant about, but. Coach Amaker, uh, he made me believe, and so so I uh, decided to come here. Well, how, how did he make you believe, you know, to be able to come into that environment? Besides, you know, PG County or D.C. kind of being Chocolate City, that's a whole different demographic. But then showing up to not only having to compete, but to compete, you know, in one of the craziest academic environments in the world. How did Coach Amaker sell you on that, and how did you kind of keep it, you know, it, it, within reach and believe you could do it? Um. Well, first I kind of look at the players he had before me. So guys like Bryce Aiken. Yeah. I seen how he let them play. Uh, Siani Chambers. <laughs> he let him play as well. So I knew he was a good guard coach. And Wesley Saunders. He, he was good. Oh, yeah, yeah Wesley sure. Saunders. Yeah. The hoop. Yeah. Seth Towns. Yeah. yeah, they could go. So he had a lot of a lot of good players come through, and um, he just he believed in me from day one. Like he just always he saw things in my game I necessarily didn't see myself and. On the school side of things, I always was fine in the classroom. I knew how to push myself and how to use my resources. So I felt like um, coming to Harvard would definitely be a challenge. But if I just worked hard at it, like I've been doing my whole life, then I'd be able to adapt. Yeah, your game has been described 
you know, by a bunch of folks that's mature beyond your years. And, and you know, I was watching a few of your uh, highlights and just seeing kind of how you move uh, around the court, you know, finishing with both hands, getting to the paint, you know, um, slow to fast pace, mm -hmm. you know, uh, fast to slow pace, and just being able to mix it up. And there's a lot of maturity uh, that comes from that. And, you know, where does that come from? And, and how has your mind mindset helped you, you know, navigate life as a, you know, now that you're considered like a big fish in a small pond? Um, I would say my game kind of came from playing against other good players. Like, I was never the fastest guard. Um, I never was the strongest guard, but I could always shoot. And a lot of people just say uh, I play, like, real smooth. So I try to use that to my advantage. Um, playing against guards that had uh, – did different things better than I did. It just kind of made me adapt. And then also playing against older guys, like I got two older brothers. I go outside and play versus them, and so I had to learn different ways to score or different uh, different styles of offense, whether to get better players the ball or things like that. So I feel like that's how I developed my game, just playing against older guys and then playing against guys who had different skill sets than me. Well, arriving to Harvard your first day or first week, what was that like? You go from, you know, it's one thing being a student athlete, but it's another thing being a black student athlete mm -hmm. on that campus. What has your time been there? How has that, like, shaped you since you, you know, arrived on campus? What's been the ups and downs and, like, just the natural adjustments? Yeah, um, when I first got here, it was <laughs> rough. Um, it, was, it was just different. Like, it was it was totally different. The people were different. It wasn't what I, what I was used to um, based on where I come from, so. Um, it was very different, but I feel like uh, growing up, I just I always had a good way of adapting with people. Um, even the high school I went to, it wasn't necessarily filled with kids from PG County. There's kids from all different backgrounds, so I was always able to adapt. And when I got here, I mean, the first couple of months was actually rough, but once I was able to adjust, find my uh, find my niche, find a good friend group, um, it just became easy sailing for me. What's been the toughest part of like adjustment? Has it been like the competitive nature, just being like, yo, I'm here to be a student, like I deserve to be in here. Has there, there been any, any stereotypes you, you hit or have having to deal with or somebody double checking? Dre has a story of when a teacher double checked and he had to prove that he's supposed to be in AP classes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if they yeah. see you now, you like you dread it up, got attached. You're like, no, nah, dog, I don't go to B BC. I go to Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> um, I never really had the experience that I feel like everybody here is special and unique in their own way. So, when I come into the classroom, it's like, I mean, they almost expect to see at least one person who look like me. So mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's that's the main thing. And, and and I know recently, you know, we've heard talk about, you know, what's happened with the president there, the DEI situation that's been going on. I'm in the tech world, so, you know, always keeping a close ear to the ground just on, you know, all types of things going on across America. Um, have y'all had the discussions as a basketball team or on campus? You know, I was just there. Not too long ago, speaking to the Black Coalition of students there, um, had a great talk with them, um, and a few of them spoke about it. Uh, but but has that affected you in any way, or has it opened your eyes to you know new new worlds or, or new people you you never really experienced before? Yeah, it definitely opened my eyes. Um, one big thing that was going on here was um, the Israel and Palestine conflict. It was a lot of protests going on, so um, I wasn't too educated on what was going on between those two. And um, my teammate my teammate shares a building with the kid who's from Palestine, so it was great to talk to that person and kind of figure out um, the conflict that's going on between them two. And then, um, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been, it's been rough, you know. Um, a lot of people protesting, a lot of people with different views, so just navigating that. Um, Coach America has been doing a great job with us uh, to make sure we're not we're not uh, involving ourselves in the wrong things, but still giving us the freedom to to say what we believe in and to do what we believe in. So, um, from that aspect, I feel like it's been a great experience, but it's also been something that's been uh, life changing in the way I view things for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that leads me to the next question. You speak on just you know having the opportunity to see so many different things that you know I think the most of us you know, don't get access to. And we talk about that all the time. You know, the, the kind of the thesis of our show, Point Four, is just giving access to those who, you know, the worlds that we exist in and kind of bringing it back, teaching them and guiding them through it. 
And so for you, you know, how do you see yourself in terms of being a, a role model, coming from the background you come from, but then having ac access to the education that you have access to, and just being a representative for other black students and athletes, you know, within your school and outside? I feel like I have a, a, a big responsibility almost. Um, it's like a lot of people, especially um, if you come from where I come from, a lot of people don't really care about school or a lot of people have dumbed themselves down to fit in with the crowd. And I feel like um, something my dad instilled in me from an early age, like, all right, it's cool to be smart. Like, he was a smart person himself, but, you know, caught up in the environment, he kind of dumbs himself, dumbed himself down and, and does what he does. My brother, the, both of my brothers, too, they were both two very smart people, but caught up in the environment, same thing, kind of dumbed themselves down to do what their friends are doing or do what other people in the environment are doing. So he always just taught me, like, it was cool to be different. It was cool to be smart and to embrace it. Um, and he always taught me to be competitive, like, be the best on the court and then be, be the best in the classroom. Like, so that was something I always carried. And I feel like that's something um, I show to the younger generation and the people who look up to me that it's cool to be be in the classroom. And then also you can have tattoos, you can have dreadlocks, but you can also be in the classroom with someone who's going to change the world or you might be the person who changed the world. So I feel like that's, that's my um, biggest responsibility right now. And then when you talk about the responsibility of carrying that, where do you see it taken into for like your platform? You look at guys like Dre, he went from being an NBA champion to being uh, the head of the union. Like, is there anything where you say, like, yo, I want to continue, and you hear a lot of these young athletes, they set their platform to really change and keep innovating and keep pushing the game forward. And you're at one of the institutions where they're great at that. Where do you want to take this to your platform? And is it, is it, are you locked in? A lot of times the talent you have, there's a lot of people that try to come steal you away take you to a big five school and you know that harvard platform is a little bit different you know yeah i um, i haven't really decided what i wanted to do with my own with myself being here at harvard um something me and my brother had talked about was a lofty expectation um lofty goal was that uh we want to build a school you know what i'm saying that's something i, I want to do in my future like when i'm a lot older than what i am now um i say that because in my life, I had some great teachers who, who kept me going and kept me motivated in school and in my um, athletic career. And so I feel like that's something that we need in our community is just better school and better teaching and, and more guidance. Because I feel like a lot of people could be where I'm at. They went down the wrong path. Or a lot of my friends or even my little cousin who passed away recently, like a lot of people just go down the wrong path. So I feel like that's something I want to do with uh with my career is to be able to build a school and and teach these kids that it's something better out here than just being an athlete or just or being in the streets. I feel like it's something better, and that's getting your education and learning different ways to make money in this world. Like it's not, it's not only two ways to make money in this world. There's a lot of different ways you could do it, and there's a lot of different ways you can be successful even if you don't make the most, most money. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's something I really want to do. And I think that speaks to just being impactful. You know, I think that word uh, is it spoke up enough. You know, like, how can I bring the most impact to my people? You know, teachers probably are the most impactful mm -hmm. per dollar <laughs> than any other profession, maybe in the world. Um, and, and, and in saying that, you know, how have you been able to balance it all? You know, you know, condolences to you and the family on the loss of your cousin. You know, you dealt with that, still can't bounce back and still playing well, producing. Um, but then, you know, being in the classroom, having to do your work. And then, um, you know, obviously playing ball. And so I was just saw something the other day. I stole it and told it to my son. He was back home, and uh, he wanted to hang out. And I had to make sure he got his workout in. Like, you going to work out today? But it was from, uh, <laughs> it was from Rick Brunson and, and Jalen. And Rick Brunson told Jalen, there's school, there's ball, and there's, there's social, social life. life. You can only have two. Can't have all three. And I was able to use that in, like, real life. Like, hey, man, what are we doing? Like, you, you only get two of the three. And so uh, we ended up having a crazy good workout. But for you, how are you able to, to balance it all? And, and, you know, what advice could you give young athletes in terms of having the right balance so they are able to take care of their schoolwork? Because we, we're in, I think we're in a phase now where everyone thinks they're going pro. And we're leaving a lot at the table uh, in terms of like the access to the things that 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 we can that we can use basketball to to, to get us there. Yeah, and I feel like I balance it. Um, 
I'm not sure. It's, it's a tough, tough question to answer, but um, I feel like one thing that was instilled in me early on was my mom, she ain't really let me go to practice unless I had my work there. Bingo. So that's something I still um, I still carry with me today is I try to get my work done before I even touch the bar, before I touch the weight. And um, even, like, say we have practice, if we had not had practice midday and I do have work that I haven't done, I just make sure I get it done. There's nothing wrong with getting your work done. There's nothing wrong with being on top of your level. Uh, Top of your work, and it's just something you can carry on in your life. Like you're gonna have deadlines that you have to meet, and no matter what you got going on, you have to meet them. And um, going back on the uh, what Rick Marsh has said about the three things, I mean, of course, uh, you're gonna have moments when you hear and you have fear of missing out. Like that's one thing I deal with a lot is fear of missing out. A lot of my friends go to HBCUs, and they show me like it's lit, it's fun, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm up here and I'm in my books, but I feel like it's just like. It's sacrifice, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to get to where you say you want to go, you're going to have to sacrifice sometimes. It's always going to be there. And it's what people always tell me. Like, it's always going to be there. And when I go home, it's still there. So it's like, it's nothing changing. So um, sacrificing that social life is something that's big and something that you're going to have to do if you want to be successful. So I just look at it from that perspective. And um, if I'm not doing work, I'm trying to do work in the gym and I, I'm trying to live or I'm watching a film. I'm doing something to get better at the game which is something that I love to do. So if it's not helping me get better at the game or helping me um, improve my life, whether off the court, then it's it's irrelevant. Yeah. You, we talked earlier about how, you know, guards like yourself, Xavier and Lee, um, we talked about former guards like Wesley Saunders, Jeremy Lin. You know, a lot of great guards came out of uh, the Ivy League. And right now, you know, you're looking uh, – you look when certain players go to Ivy League, there's a lot of rules and, you know, stipulations that kind of stop guys from going there. Just a couple of years ago, you guys were just allowed to start getting scholarships, correct? No, nah, we still don't Dang, have Y'all still don't have So what was nah. that's That is crazy. <laughs> All right. So what would you like to see, you know, implemented moving forward? You know, not only in order to help, like, the black athlete, but, but just to help more athletes get into Ivy League and make it, like, a crazier, you know, make the league really cracking, you know, at a high level. Um, something I like to see the Ivy League implement is just is having scholarships. I feel like that's the main thing. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't come to Ivy League schools because they don't have the ability to pay for school or they don't know what scholarships to get in order to fund their schooling. So that was something that made me hesitant as well. I told Coach Amaker before he got me here, I was like, I would have been committed here if I, if I knew what was going on financially, everything was straight. So I feel like that's the main thing. Or they could, uh fix for sure Can you break down what's that like like when you accept and say yo i'm going here to harvard most of us we get you know we got to go through clearinghouse and we get our scholarship and all that yeah. Pell grant nonsense like how what's the um you know what's the the rate like that in order to get the tuition going down like how do you go about that what's the financial aid and you know okay uh for me a um i still had the well, I feel like everybody in Ivy League, they still have to do the application process. Mm-hmm. You still have to write your uh, papers and answer the questions that they uh, give. And um, financial aid, you can get scholarships based off of, you know, there's a lot of different scholarships out here. Um, I'm not sure about any of any specific scholarship, but just like a regular student, you're basically a regular student here. like, And that's how they treat you. So um, <laughs> You're a regular student, honestly. Like you don't have, you, you don't get the same benefits as everybody else at the Division One school. Room. And um, yeah, so basically, like you get you get your uh, you pay your school through your financial aid, and it's based off of like your parents' salaries and things like that. Yeah, because the, the, what's the uh, average uh, parent salary at Harvard? Is it is it is it B's? Yeah, I think so. It's one percent, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, ninety nine percent is the one percent. And what's crazy that endowment? What's so crazy that people complain about? It, it's like the endowment is like billions at Harvard. So when you sit there, it's like man, like y'all facility is nice, but you go to the the gym at the business school, it's got like seven courts over there, and like you know some of yeah. these. I once asked them, like, yo, where's the, the basketball arena? People didn't even know at one point. I'm like, they, damn, you that smart? Like, you have no clue where the basketball arena is. Check out the uh, ERC, the uh, Enterprise Research Center. It's, it's being built on campus right now. It's the first minority-owned uh, real estate property at Ivy League School. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, yeah. Kyle Lowry, 
Oh, we might have to get an NIL deal or something going in, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to look into that for yeah, sure. So, so so we built that. So we we did it with Teachman Spire. It was, it was the first minority-led uh, real estate project at Ivy League school. That's big time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we, um, it's, it's they dug, they in the dirt right now, um, and I'm looking forward to it. But, you know, as far as, like, how you how far you've come, you know, you're finishing up your, your first year there. Um what advice would you give other, you know, student athletes in high school um, in terms of like aiming to pursue a higher education uh, with uh, athletic excellence um, and, and pursuing just the Ivy League institutions? I, I would say HBCUs as well. But um, what advice would you give them or what words would you express to them in terms of, you know, looking to looking to go to an Ivy League school as an opportunity to, you know, be impactful? Yeah, um, I would tell them, for one, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Like, you want to do this, um, there's a lot of sacrifice that comes with it. And um, that's the main thing I really tell them is just there's a lot of sacrifice and effort, too. Let me just um, just stay disciplined. That's something I struggle with sometimes, being disciplined, uh, getting up, wanting to go work, uh, or getting, getting your schoolwork done. Um, so I feel like that's the main thing, staying disciplined, especially now in this world with the and I know and all the money that schools can give the players, I feel like a lot of players lose track of which end goal is, which is to be a professional. And um they get the NIL money and they get the collective money and they and they just become satisfied. They they start buying clothes, everybody wanna wear fresh gear. Uh, I feel like that's just a distraction to like if you say you wanna be a basketball player, you go you gonna work and don't matter where you at, don't matter how much money you're getting. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the main thing. So being disciplined is that discipline and, and being willing to sacrifice is the two main things. That's real. Well, hey, Malik, we'll end it here, man. I really appreciate you. You giving us your time. Obviously, uh, you know, it's amazing interviewing you right now. We're looking forward to the rest of your career. You killed it in just the, the short six months you played, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to what you do next. And uh, definitely want to stay in contact and, um, you know, keep killing, keep putting on. When you're done, when you're done playing basketball, I got a uh, – I'm talk- whenever you want to be done playing basketball, that could be 10 years, 15 years, I got a couple jobs for you. C- come find me. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. No, Appreciate it for sure. No doubt, man. Keep doing your thing, man. Appreciate your time, man, and keep putting on. Keep leading. Yes, sir. For real. For no sure. problem. Got you. And yes. Don't get too tied up now, bro. Don't cross the line. You know? <laughs> I, I ain't get – last time I got a tattoo was my senior year of high school. I ain't get one in college okay, yet. Okay, cool, because so, dudes yeah. to get that Pell Grant and go hit the tattoo <laughs> artist. It's like, bro, you need braces. You giving a <laughs> – you giving a dude all this money. You know what I mean? My teammates would go do that, just spend everything. So enjoy that, though, all right? Yes, sir. Appreciate love, y'all. Love, squad. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Um – Tell Tommy there's a uh, 16 year old, uh, 6'8", 160 pound cat. Oh yeah, a... he'll take him. Yeah, he he he'll come watch. I got you for sure. <laughs> All right, well, Stan- Stanford called, but I don't know what's going on in that situation. They got two guys transferred. Yeah, Stoyakovich is up out of there. Yeah, yeah, it don't look like it's a legacy school. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, fam, you take care of yourself. Right. I know you gotta get the class. Yes, sir. Love, bro. Point forward. So uh, Russell Westbrook is joining Target and building 180 affordable housing units for residents in his hometown of South Central L.A. So dope. Um, Westbrook announced his involvement in a project called Evermont that would bring 180 affordable housing units, uh, a seed school, and a community center centered businesses to the corner of Vermont and Manchester Avenues in South L.A. Uh, It's a prime star development. We'll partner with Westbrook Enterprises to create a new retail center in the community, that will include a Target and a South L.A. cafe. Bridge Housing and CRCD will be leading the development of 180 affordable housing units for seniors and families. And uh, this is Russ saying we have this platform. And me personally, I really pride myself on trying to be the face of Los Angeles when it comes to our community. I'm from L.A., and I feel like it's my duty and my honor to give back to as many people as possible, especially the underserved communities of Los Angeles. I will do everything I can to make sure I continue to fill some of these gaps, whether it's education, whether it's finances, whether it's health care. Whatever they may, that may be, I try my best to do the best that I can. So I, I got a question. Actually, this is you know, for sure where I wanted to take it. You see guys trying to do things like this compared to uh, that of Derek Coleman back in the day mm-hmm. when he tried to rebuild Detroit. Mm-hmm. Clearly, he lost his money trying to redo that. Mm-hmm. 
I always want to understand like the story in between of like why he wasn't successful and kind of like the journey of like how much like NBA players are able to break out just being NBA players mm -hmm. and having the support from their you know from their government to be able or their community to be able to do things like this to really affect. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's um, you know, it's interesting times. You know, uh, Derek Coleman DC situation was. I feel like it was just before the financial crisis, the housing crisis. Yeah, it was something like that. Right? Yeah, he's supposed to, he spent like what? Yeah. Like all yeah, his yeah, fortune yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to rebuild everything. Try to rebuild it. And it's it's interesting that um, the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers capitalized on it. Because he bought down, like, he bought like the uh, entire downtown of Detroit for $1. Literally $1, but he promised like a yeah, hundred million yeah, worth of stuff. and investing into the city and building buildings. But you you just build it. That's just an investment. You know, yeah. you just get it back. You build You basically yeah, yeah. are creating Sims. You basically did Sims. Correct. 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 And so, um, I think, you know, over time athletes, you know, we try to learn from the past and see ways to, um, you know, be as, Provide get as least risk as possible. Use other people's money. The, uh, the, the access to use other people's money. Right, 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 right. And then partnerships. Yeah, the and partnership, tar everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so uh, Russ has always been at the forefront of that. You know, whether it's uh, honor the gift, his clothing line, Love and it. the brand around that, uh, and just giving back to the community. Uh, what he does at UCLA, he has the um, uh, the practice facility, and they have the weight room. Yeah. Uh, that they use there now is it's just it's beautiful what he's doing for the uh, city of LA. So we just wanted to um, touch on that real quick, just because it's like you know, it's interesting a lot of the conversation you have around basketball players and people don't understand like the impacts. It's funny I never <laughs> and put respect on his name for two years y'all was calling him Westbrook. It's, it's, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, some yeah. of the people probably living in here was on that goofy stuff. So, so you understand what I'm saying? So like. Not much of a convo, just an, another man stepping out, doing more, doing some superhuman mm -hmm. stuff, and and giving back. But I, I always thought it's pretty cool when you hear stories about, mm -hmm. you know, like the Derek Coleman situation and how far we came in Paul's sure. 30 years to be able to jumpstart and get partnership to be able to build a vision. For sure. Point forward. Yo, what's up? What's up again? We back with another segment of our favorite. One of our favorite segments, that newer segments, mm -hmm. and it's called That's a Bar. It's nothing too crazy. We just go. Straight into, uh, you know, what you guys been saying, some of the most popular people on the streets, and we kind of, you know, stamping and be like, wow, that's valid. Mm -hmm. And this one is coming from one of our favorite Frenchmen, a potential face of the league. Mm -hmm. I'm joking. The next face the of the league. The next face <laughs> of the league, he already told us. But long story short, when he's being interviewed the other day about who will win defensive player of the year, we're talking about Victor Wimbanyana, or... Rudy Gobert, he said, I know that Rudy has a very good chance of winning it this year, and it would be deserved. Let him win it now because after that, it's no longer his turn. That What you want me to say? Oh, no, and I love the confidence, G, because I hate the stuff. Like, oh, no, he's really good. It's like, no, bro. But I've been busting buddy ass for like two, three years. Ask Rudy what he think, bro. Y'all compare me. to I, I'm waiting for him to say that. Like, stop. Don't compare me to Rudy no more. And Rudy's a legend. In France, they're, they're arguing he's the best, the best French basketball player ever lived, which is why I'm glad. That's a hell of a compliment. No, I'm uh, no. That's, that's why I'm glad Wimby was born, so we won't have to live on an earth when <laughs> we're big. Rudy's a great, best. great player. He's, he's, How many times he win defensive player of the year? Three, but he's seven four. Exactly. So you know, his body of work speaks for itself. Yeah, he dunked it a couple times too, right? Yeah. Stop playing with him. <laughs> <laughs> Point. Forward. All right, so Curry Brand is signing University of South Carolina freshman guard Malaysia Fuwali to a multi year NIL deal. According to the company's announcement, the 5'10 freshman guard from Columbia, South Carolina, will wear Curry Brand footwear on the court for the remainder of her Gamecocks playing days. Off the court, she will serve as a brand ambassador. Malaysia was, will receive support from Curry Brand and Under Armour to further develop basketball in her ho hometown and continue the grassroots work she has already initiated in her community. So I don't know if you watched the SEC tournament. It kind of got drowned out by the little fight mm -hmm. between uh, – shoot, I'm not mad at alpha females. I like that a little bit but every now and Flo then. Flo J Brother was wilding. Flaw J Brother was wilding. And I'm going to be on – shout out – whatevs, 
them girls is too big for you, bro. For you to be <laughs> jumping out there, like, come on, bro. You better be lucky they ain't hit you for real. Like, man, get this little man up out of here. I think they handled it well. The, the women handled it very well. Like, it wasn't going beyond what it was. Yeah, and I think, I, shout out to, like, Dawn Staley, but I appreciated her at yeah. the end. Like, even just talking, like, no, it's fire. Yeah. Like, sometimes, yeah. like, you don't want fights to occur, but at the yeah. same time, people are competing and getting after it. And obviously, through all, throughout all, like, the hysteria, you know, we ca- it kind of got overshadowed with Malaysia. She's yeah. the first freshman to ever win, you know, the SEC Conference Tournament MVP. It was tough. Championship game, she had 24 points. Yeah. And what was pretty dope, we talked about her high school career back in Columbia, South Carolina. She, she started played playing varsity. Six years of varsity basketball, going back to the seventh grade. For the seventh grade and oh, won wow. four state titles in six years. She, so she really bought that light, fam. So I think one thing that would be dope if they do tell a, a crazy story or being able to tell her story, it's going to look even better with yeah. her style of play. She, how she hoop, fam? She yeah. hoop like, um, remember on Space Jam, what, oh, what was her name? When she when she ran Charles Barkley Lola? off the court. It wasn't Lola the Bunny? No, the hoop. When Charles Barkley was in the park, and he was hooping, he's like, oh, go away, oh, want to oh, be. Okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That woman hooped at North Carolina, I forget her name, G. She had the coldest handle ever, and that's who Malaysia hoops like, hmm. damn. Just... On the string. I remember being in shorties watching her just play with the rock for like the last minute of the game just on a string. And like Malaysia behind the back, mm-hmm. full speed, full court, crazy. Now crazy see, passes. And you know, if, if Steph stamps you, mm-hmm. that's thorough. And what he said was, when it comes to the ability to change the game for good, nobody can speak to, to that more than Malaysia. She's changing the women's game on the fly with how she plays and moves on the court. She has a unique style and flow to her game that I don't think many people have seen in a long, long time. I'm humbled that she's now part of the family. That's big time, yeah, bro. It is. That's what's up. Point forward. Yo, actually, you've been going kind of viral recently. Yeah, I don't know. How I went viral because people can't read. You know, like, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost to the point where. <laughs> I went viral because motherfucker. I'm almost I hope to they the, read this. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, almost, I'm at the point now where I'm just like. <laughs> I, I see how people see themselves above other people. And I always try to be humble about things and show a sense of humility. But at some at some point, like, because it's like, do y'all, can y'all not read oh, yeah. or can you not listen? Uh, it's like you, you want to have a Kwame Brown moment. See, this, this is your problem. You don't get it because you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? No, I'm, yeah. And, and Bogut... And Andrew Bogut, shout out to my guy. Yeah. He tweeted yesterday, or he tweeted the other day. He was like, this is exactly what Andre was talking about when he said who's the most feared at the end of a game. And so it's not about who's better than who or this or that. In one particular moment, I'm stating what I know because I've seen it. Yeah. And so for the response to be what it is sometimes, I'm just like, I'm getting to the point where I'm about to, like, the way the way that people are voicing themselves at me feels like an attack. I'm almost ready to be like, listen, dog, like you, you I will give you my address. Please, please pull up on me with that energy, please. Damn, you at that level? You weren't really like that in Philly, fam. It is getting crazy because it'd be like people in the Bay. I'm like, and those would be the worst fans. Oh, really? Those are like the worst yeah, fans. No, I it's like that. fans who. Don't know anything about basketball until their team starts winning. Yeah, you, and you, <laughs> then they're a fan now. But the irony of all this—that's the result of being a face of the NBA, though. If you think like we, yeah. we call Brian sexual, you got the Steph. Like you say anything oh, yeah. about Steph, it's like people hunt, hunting, like yeah. hunting you up and down. Like you better not ever say that again. <laughs> like I guess that's the the, the thing of being. But I love to be proved right, so thank you. And low key, say what y'all want, bro. I was trying to cause some hate on that, bro. Kyrie, it literally rotated perfectly. <laughs> like, he came out the corner, Paul, the 2.8. Has he real quick? Like, yeah. he's going to shoot the three. Yeah. Dude's on his right hand. He literally does a run, not this way towards the rim, that way. Bro, the ball literally rotated like he shot at, like, a jimmy, like a jumper, bro. It was crazy. And with that being said, prior to that big-time shot, Kyrie had a crazy mind of just putting out publicly that he wanted to play for Team USA in Paris because, you know, I think he probably thinks he's a top 12 player and that's what you usually do. 
And he is. Oh, okay. No, Thank I'm being sarcastic. Okay. Okay. No, sorry. Like, no, like, <laughs> I'm being dead serious. So I think when that came out the other day, pause, a lot of people are just kind of like, uh, I guess. But it's like, no, we're talking about if you're going to send your best over. We ain't going to lose. We're not going to. That's all I'll say. We ain't going to lose. We're not going to lose at all. And, like, shout out to Tyrese Halliburton and all them other young dudes, man. Y'all got to get out the way, G. Like, I want to see Steph. I want to see Kyrie. I want to see Dane. They're my three guards. Oh, guards. They're, they're my three guards I want to see. All uh, right. Drew going to make the team. Oh, damn. All right. Drew, you're going to have to play the two. <laughs> D-Book, you got to stay at the crib because we're going to have a- Anthony Edwards coming. Pause. Mm, this, it's this, tough this year. First off, this is a grand stage for Anthony Edwards. Like he the only one crazy enough to like outshine everybody. Like how how mellow used like he ain't lying. Yeah, how mellow used to be packed <laughs> right. in and everything. Yeah, you are right. Like how you have like teams with like uh, the 2012 team with Brian all them. Like mellow would still come out and go break records, go yeah. get 20. Like, let's score. Yeah, like let like let him score. Like or the F- KD lead us to score. Man, Melo, Melo broke a couple like records yeah, during that yeah, day, and yeah, it was like he, he was the fifth yeah. option somehow, yeah. and it was like it was yeah. still impressive. He was yeah. able to still show his skill set, yeah. and it wasn't. Yeah. People remember Melo, but they kind of just x him out of the Olympic like yeah. the hierarchy in that sense, in my personal opinion. But when we're talking about Kyrie Irving, we can't forget right now for for Paris his. His international competition resume is uh, he won an Olympic gold medal in 2016. He won a, a World Cup gold medal in 2014. You said that's the best that's the best tournament to really play in, correct? Yeah, you get cracking over there. And then when he was 18, he won a 2010 FIBA Americas uh, game. But and in 2014, and, he was... And in 2010, y'all saw what he did to the 2012. In 2012, y'all saw what he did to that team yeah, in the yeah, practice. Kobe and them. <laughs> R.I.P. Kobe. I was watching. And in 2014, he was USA... Basketball Male Athlete of the Year, the Most Valuable Player of the 2014 FIBA Basketball World Cup, and a member of the FIBA Basketball World Cup, you know, all tournament team. Mm-hmm. So he basically were all world. That was lit. To be able to be called all world was just probably easier to do than like be all NBA. That's true. But I feel like my arrogance want, want to be like your all world guard. Evan Turner, you know, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, like you know. But yeah. w- what do you think as a former player? It's like, I, like, do you think he deserves to get there? And how do you think if he does go out there, what would his reputation be? Do you think he would get a lot of flat from what occurred a couple years ago? Yeah, I, I don't know nothing about Kyrie. I won't speak on Kyrie forever ever again. I just do know that they won't lose if he's on the team. Point forward. That's a wrap. Another episode of Point Forward. Huge thanks to Malik and all of you for tuning in. Remember, the conversation doesn't end here. Follow Point Forward on social media to continue the discussion and get a sneak peek of what's coming up next.